Now, a lot of you have been asking me, Chris, what's next? The next is next. Okay, bad jokes aside, you've probably all seen it. This is the, well, they say bezel is foam, but we know there's bezels. And it's got an in fingerprint scanner, which is uh, probably, this is actually gonna be the first one. I thought it was gonna be the Xiaomi Mi 8 Explorer, but that seems to have been somewhat delayed. And of course it has that interesting pop-up camera. So it's great to see companies pushing the envelope, bringing us new designs and designs without resorting to the compromise, which is of course the notch. All right, so I bought this one here from Trading Shenzhen. It's a new shop that I'm trying out for me. I normally use AliExpress, but I'm going with these guys now. They tend to get devices pretty quick. Although this model has been super hard to get hold of and the price has been quite crazy because they've been releasing very limited stocks of this, creating demand and a lot of hype. So they've included, obviously you probably saw that, the adapter there for me, EU adapter, and also an OTG adapter there too. So quite a flash looking box here. You can see it's mentioning the World Cup, of course, Russia 2018. They are big sponsors. You've probably seen their adverts. I remember seeing a game and just seeing them everywhere. I thought, wow, they've pumped a lot of money into advertising this phone. It does come nicely presented in the box here. Now this is a large phone. I will compare it to some other phones I have, some large ones, the size of them. And we've got this little thing on the side here that just says open. So, okay, it's one of these ones. So this pulls out and, oh, we get a case and some earphones there, which is good to see. So this case has a rubber finish to it. It's very nice. And I just noticed that where the buttons are, there's no rigid backing. So it's got a rigid plastic backing here and then this soft rubber overlay over the outside there. And that should hopefully clip into the phone quite nicely, but I'll check out the phone in a second. So here we have the SIM tray and obviously there's some instructions, Vivo S, and this is all gonna be in Chinese, surprising enough, being a Chinese phone. And then the earphones here, I will have to test these out uh, later on and I'll give you an update of these in my unboxing. Now these will be 3.5 millimeter earphones because it does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Thankfully, they did not drop that. So here's the charger. It's rated maximum output is 10 volts, 2.25 amps. And finally, the type C cable. The length of it is okay. Being a big phone at 6.59 inches, it is gonna be heavy and it is definitely heavy. Tipping the scales at 207 grams. 8.7 millimeters thick, which isn't too bad considering it is packing a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Okay, so get this out of the wrap here. And there we go, an all screen display. That looks amazing so far. And we'll see what the bezels are like when I power this on, but first let's have a look at the design. So I've got a nice metal frame that is very curved and rounded, feels great in hand all around this phone. You can see there, there's the selfie cams. This is gonna pop up when you activate it. I'm a little concerned about dust protection because you have this in your pocket and that attracts a lot of dust. I mean, just look at your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack after a month or so of being in your pocket. It falls full of dust. So we do have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can clearly see it and a second mic. On the right side, metal buttons there. Obviously it's volume up and down and power. They do have a nice feel to them. It's definitely a premium build on the next. On the right side, there is this textured AI button. I don't know whether this is actually gonna be any use to us outside of China. It's my understanding that it may be all in Chinese. Down the bottom, you find the SIM tray. So we'll take two nano SIMs, no micro SD card support with this one, unfortunately. I'll just quickly show you the tray. So there is a little bit of rubber, a tiny little rubber gasket, a little bit hard to see here on camera, around that offering some protection. Microphone is this little dot right here, the Type-C port, then the loudspeaker, and you can just make out another one of those antenna lines there. Next is written on the back here, dual tone LED flash, that larger lens you can see right there, that's the main camera sensor, so it's 12 megapixels, f1.8 aperture, 1.4 micrometer pixel size, four axis ISO, and you can see the marketing there, AI camera. So this little lens here, that's five megapixels, it's got an aperture of 2.4 and it's just used for the blurred background when you use the depth effect mode. Now you'll see that the phone and along the top, there's no earpiece, so no standard earpiece. It's actually behind the screen transmitting the sound. So down the bottom, we still have a bottom bezel, of course, and there is a pre-applied screen protector on it already. The glass is 2.5D rounded too, which is a nice touch. And you expect this, of course, on a flagship expensive phone. 
So in hand, this phone feels like a quality flagship phone, which it is, of course, really good. Now you see that we've got this fancy manufacturing technique here for the back of the glass. So they used a material, a layer under the glass, and you can get these different reflections. You can see the colors almost like a blue, like a purple, green there, which is uh, really interesting. It's different and it does look nice. I like the rounded edges on the back and overall, yes, a very, very good build to this phone, a definite flagship. And of course, it wouldn't be a video of mine without showing you the case as well, which fits really nice. As you expect, some manufacturer cases always fit perfectly. So if you do happen to lay it down flat, it's going to protect the screen because you can see there the edges are raised up. So it won't sit fully flush. And same goes for the cameras on the back. So there's camera protection too. You can see right there. And overall, a very nice case. It feels good in hand and of high quality. Powering it on now for the first time. So this is already probably going to be set up hopefully with Google Play Store on here because I've got it from Trading Shenzhen. That's what they do. They'll, they'll put Google Play on there and sometimes it actually can be quite difficult to get it installed. The screen so far, that is looking very deep, those blacks on there, of course, being a super AMOLED panel. This one is 6.59 inches with a resolution of uh, 2316 by 1080. So it's a little bit of an odd resolution because it's stretched right out there. Okay, so already set up and it is in English and take a look at those bezels they do look really really good there um, impressive so far this is uh, it's kind of got that wow factor a little bit like the Mi Mix when I first got my hands on that phone so there you can see the top bezel is quite slim rounded corners of course and the side bezels as well they do look pretty good they have really slimmed this down and the bottom chin there Rounded corners, of course, again, and you can see there, there's the tiny little, those bars there, they're for your gestures. So I can see it does have plenty of Chinese bloat here. So we've got QQ, WeChat, uh, no idea what QQ is. I think it's just one of those messaging ones there. So a lot of this stuff you can simply delete and uninstall, which is good. And it's been a while since I have actually used this OS. This is Fun OS version number four. If you swipe up from here, that's going to bring up your toggles, which, yes, do have quite an iOS look to them, don't they? And your notifications, they're just like any other Android phone, so you need to swipe down for those. I've noticed that the touch screen is very responsive. It feels very smooth and quick. It, it reacts to your touch so fast, which is what you'd expect for the spec and the chipset. So FunTouch OS has an update here for me, and it optimizes the system. We've got some new features that it's added in for Jovi, which is that AI assistant thing. I will test it out in a minute. Camera optimizations as well. Of course, I will install this. Now, I know a lot of would-be buyers are going to have this question. What about Google Play Store? So all you need to do is just use the Google Play Installer, which is this app right here. I'm very familiar with it because I use it on the Xiaomi phones that I review in the channel. And it just goes through step by step, installing the framework, Google Play Store, all of that. And it is right here. And it is, of course, working. I also see that uh, Trading Shenzhen installed Google Keyboard for me as well, which is better than the Voyo Keyboard. For the system navigation, like other phones now that are using these more, you could say, bezel screens, You've got this option here. So you've got the navigation gestures, which I'm currently using because I just want to get used to the gestures. I find it a little bit better. But if you don't like that, you still have, of course, your typical normal Android navigation keys. So free space we get on the 256 gigabyte model. Sorry, I made a bit of a mistake there. I don't have the 128 gigabyte one. You get 225 gigabytes free. So that's a lot because we don't have any expandable storage on this. So you can see the ROM is not completely shifted over into English. Some Chinese right here. There's just Chinese everywhere. So if I go into, for example, their music application, iMusic, you probably wouldn't use this. You'd use something like Power Amp, which is probably much better anyway than this. But you can see some Chinese down the bottom, obviously, because that's one of the tracks I'm playing. But when you go into Discover, then yeah, it's the store's all in Chinese here. And even some of these options pop up in Chinese. So most people wouldn't even be using this app. But you are going to see some of that. So if you want a phone that doesn't have any Chinese in it and some of those apps and things like that, then this is probably not the one to go for. But it's only just a few things. And this, of course, I can remove some of those to get rid of it. So now let's look at the in-screen fingerprint reader. This is a unique feature of this phone. There are now about two other mobile phones or three that have this. So you've got to wake the device first. I've already gone through the setup. You had to put in a pin number. Ask It asks you a couple of security questions as well. So you need to wake it first. 
and then you can see this is lit up. Now this is always going to be the screen on with this little icon there at the exact same position. So I'm a little worried about screen burn being a super AMOLED panel. Anyway, let's have a look at how fast it is. So place my thumb here, I've already set up. And there we go. That to me is not bad at all and definitely worth it. I thought it was going to be much slower than this and that is good. My only concern is after doing this for two years, I'm pretty sure we're going to see some screen and burn with that little icon there coming through. Okay, so time to test out the pop-up selfie cam. So I'm going to press to swap over the camera now. And there you go, see it pops up. Um, yeah, that's good. It makes a little noise, which is nice. I'm definitely not clapping my hands and going, yeah, whoo, wow, that's amazing. No, it's not quite a nifty little features. This is the first time I've actually seen it come up there. And it looks like a quality little camera that they've put on the top. And I can't see any dust seals around it, but it looks like the unit itself is sealed. On the back of it, it says auto lifting. I don't know why they needed to add that because it's pretty obvious when you turn it on, it lifts up. Closer look at the screen now. So the gamma comes out to be around about 2.4 in between 2.4, 2.3. Viewing angles, good because it is a super AMOLED panel. Now I do have the screen protector currently on it. So that's maybe limiting it a little bit, but it is actually really good. This is a very nice panel that I have on here. Now one thing that seems to be missing to me in the settings is a control of your color. So there's no white balance. There's no other saturated or more natural colors. You can't select that. I don't know whether I'm looking in the wrong place, but I assume it would be under display, but that is missing. But even so, it is still a very good display and it is really bright as well. So you can see just these examples here that it's looking good. The blacks are very deep too, as you'd expect for a super AMOLED panel. Maximum brightness is 710 lux, which is very good. That's quite high. And the dimmer setting too, so very good for late nighttime use. It's super dark, you can't even make it out almost. But when you turn the lights off, you can see it fine. And I'll just crank up the brightness. You can see it goes up really, really bright there. And there is no pulse width modulation flicker. So I just finished up running and 2 and the score is kind of out of this world if you're into synthetic benchmarks. Check this out and a perfect score, 290,000. This is really good performance. It's the highest I have seen for this particular chipset. If you compare that to my OnePlus 6 here, this one gets 267,000. This one has six gigabytes of RAM, so two gigabytes of RAM less. But even so, a really impressive score on both of these devices. DRM info, so it is level three for Google Widevine. Uh, which is not good. This means that Netflix uh, will not run in more than just standard definition and you can't install it from Google Play. You need to sideload it or you need to download an app from one of those websites and then you can get it on there at least. Treble supports so, are not looking good. So it does not support both partition A and B. Unfortunately, I don't know whether the bootloader on this is locked. I imagine that it probably would be. So you know, custom ROMs and things like that on this phone, I don't see it happening anytime soon. So here are the wireless speeds, which are very impressive. They're really good. So I walked over to the other side of the apartment, which you can see right here. I quickly ran over there and you see the speeds do drop down, but they go right up to a maximum of 686 megabits per second. So very fast wireless AC on this phone, of course, with the Snapdragon 845. Impressive, really. And GPS works just as well. I'm seeing some very high signal strength that I don't normally see up to 44 for some of these satellites. It all depends on what you're locked onto. It didn't lock onto all of them or use them, but it runs very well. Accuracy always seems to stay around four to three meters. So that is all good. So it'll be a perfect find for GPS when you have a look, of course, at how big the screen is. It's gonna be really ideal for that. And being a super AMOLED panel, it just gives a little bit more sunlight legibility. So the internal storage is UFS 2.1 spec, blazing fast for a mobile phone. I mean, this, these read speeds, they are faster than a SATA 3 SSDs. So we'll test out now that little AI button, but it's to my understanding that uh, this is only working in China or for Chinese people or people that speak Chinese. So you hold it down and it's just come up with something saying Jovi, no idea what this is saying. I think you're supposed to talk to it probably. Hello, do you understand English? Okay, well, it doesn't understand my funky New Zealand accent. So I won't be using this at all. 
Now you may have noticed here that with the toggles, there's a couple of other options here. So some of them are obvious. So eye protection, this is gonna remove the blue light to stop you keeping yourself awake at night when you're looking at a white screen. The rest is obvious. So, okay, screenshots, flashlight, Bluetooth. But we do have these two options here. So speed up, all that's doing is simply just a task manager clearing the RAM. That's all it's gonna do. And yeah, that will possibly speed things up. Now game mode, let's take a look at this. This is uh, new. So these are the settings we have. So we've got obviously to turn it on. Now there's things like it will uh, block the calls. It's gonna try and prioritize network traffic, I think, and things like that. Yeah, network optimization right there. Bot mode even. Uh, this is, what does it say? Autoplay mode games will continue running when the screen is off. Okay, so if you're running a bot in, who would run a bot? Or maybe lineage. Okay, lineage is a good example there. So lineage two, when you're doing the auto fight mode, auto battling, and it's gonna level up automatically. So that's a good setting to have on there. Auto reject calls. Uh, it's pretty straightforward there. Game, picture, and picture. During calls, you can open up chat in the easy touch window. Now, my biggest concern is the ROM. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a lot of people's concern as well, being the fact that it's got Chinese. Actually, there's a German option in there as well. So if you are German, it looks like you're gonna have German. So there's this some sort of a smart launcher thing here. If you're used to running Android phones, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I keep accidentally doing is I swipe down to go and adjust the brightness for the camera. And whoops, I know I have to keep doing it here. So in the settings, they have a lot of settings, lots of them. I, I mean, it's kind of, too many, almost. So there's lots of things you can tweak in here. You've got one-handed mode, you've got split-screen display, obviously. Um, smart motion here, I'll just show you that very quickly. I won't go through absolutely everything. App clones, you know, you can run two versions of WhatsApp if you wanted to with the two sims. So you can have one for work, one for personal use. A uh, smart click here as well. So yeah, there's lots of things. You can do this to hold down and launch. I'll set it to uh, the camera, to open up the camera for me. So there's a lot of customization in here and lots of things you can go th through here. And obviously there is no face unlocking with this phone, otherwise the camera would have to pop up all the time and it would probably just be so much slower than of course using this right here, that fingerprint reader. And this is a question that just popped up via message on Twitter while I was still doing this video is, can you run Nova Launcher? So yeah, you can run it. But the problem is with the gestures and even when you change over to the standard navigation buttons, as soon as you go home, it's back to Vivo's custom launcher. So, you know, you can't have it, even though you can see all your apps here and that looks nice. If you don't like their launcher, I don't know. At this stage, this is just testing it out. There may be a way to fix this to make it the default home app and make it Nova Launcher instead of Vivo's. Audio is something that is very important to me in a mobile phone and the voice calls, even though we don't have a traditional earpiece, there still is a speaker, it's under there and it actually sounds better than what I thought it was going to sound like. I thought it might've been like the Mi Mixers and it's similar, you do feel the vibrations when you're talking to someone, you hear them, you can feel the glass vibrating, the phone vibrating a little bit, depending of course on how loud you've got the volume, but the core quality is, is actually fine. That's good, so no issues with that. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the top, sounds good to me, no problems there. There's no static, there's no hiss or interference or anything like that. It seems good, uh, nothing to rant on about. It's just standard there to me. It's, the volume output from it as well seems all right, not too bad, but let's have a listen now to the speaker. The loudness is fine, it's good. There's a tiny bit of distortion, little tiny hint of bass as well. Overall, it's passable. It's a perfectly fine loudspeaker on the Nex. Now you were probably wondering, it's an AMOLED panel, Super AMOLED. So does it have an always on display? Yes, of course it does. Good to see this is here. And you can get it to, of course, uh, show notifications. So those are your phone and your messages. And you can also see you can change the clock type as well. So you've got a digital clock or you can do uh, various different clock faces there. So there's quite a bit of customization with it. So this one is obvious. All of the most demanding games, they're going to run perfectly fine. This is the flagship fastest Android chipset that you can get. Snapdragon 845. And this right here is Lineage 2 on the highest settings. And it looks really great because we do have those super slim bezels and you get that large screen, more immersive gaming experience. PUBG, of course, runs fine and it is on the ultra frame rate setting and HD, so high settings here. So this is the camera app and right here you'll see we've got your typical filters, 
right here is AI mode. So this is think, still going to work. It's going to work in English. So you can tap it and it will detect what it is looking at. So at the moment, it's looking at absolutely nothing. So it's going to detect absolutely nothing. So you're going to need internet, of course, for this, I think, because it's using the database or whatever to search. So yeah, exactly. No, no results found. No, that was pretty obvious that that was going to happen. Text, you can set it into text mode as well. I'm going to read that, convert it. And this is when you go over to the front selfie cam. So if you press that, then it's going to pop out. It makes that little sound effect. Right here is your depth effect mode. HDR controls the flash. Pretty self-explanatory. Settings for the camera. You can see them right here. Um, AI scene identification. Uh, turn that off. So when you tap it, it's actually off. So it's not colored anymore. So that's how you know that it is uh, off there. So video mode. Uh, lacking options, definitely, because we've got 4K, 30 hertz, uh, sorry, 30 frames per second, but no 60 frames per second option, unlike other Snapdragon 845 devices. 1080p, 720p, but no 60 frames per second, no 120 or 240 frames per second option. So that is kind of a little bit of a disappointment there. Augmented reality stickers, if you like that sort of stuff. Beauty mode as well as there, your typical panorama. And we'll just go over here into the pro mode. So we've got control of the autofocus, white balance, shutter rate, and ISO and the exposure. Now ISO will go all the way up to 3200. So I'm shooting in the maximum setting here, which is 4K. We do have four axis optical image stabilization. And I'm holding it handheld, of course, and it's not too bad here. So the focus is dual pixel phase detection autofocus, and that means it locks on and gets focus uh, really quite quick, as you can see there. And it doesn't seem to do any focus hunting or anything like that. You don't seem to have that problem with this type of focus technology used. So I'm going to walk ahead, as you can see, there is some optical image stabilization wobble. That's normal. And it doesn't sadly incorporate electronic image stabilization as well, like for example the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the S9, which would be nice and that would help improve the quality of the footage so it wasn't so unsteady at times here. But it's better than nothing, of course, having optical image stabilization can help out in low light too. Sample of the front facing camera here, so 1080p maximum. Quality seems to be reasonable, not too bad and it's not using any electronic image stabilization, which is a shame. I feel it should definitely at least have this. And we could also do with maybe a 4K option if that was possible. So this phone is impressive, and it has a bit of that wow factor because of the screen, a little bit like the Mi Mix when I first got it. It just is really quite something when you see it. Okay, we don't have a notch on this, so Vivo didn't go with that uh, notch compromise, you could call it. We don't have that problem here, and the earpiece actually doesn't sound too bad. The pop-up camera, you could see, see that as a bit of a, a novelty there, but it's actually quite good. The photo quality from it is fine. And will it last the 50,000 times it's going to go up and down and all that? I don't know. It could be a problem for people in the future. So if you plan to hang on to this phone for two years and you're going to have it 
take thousands of selfies, then it probably will wear out or break or something like that. So it's, it's one thing to bear in mind there. So this phone is missing a couple of things. It doesn't have NFC support on there, which is interesting. I don't know why they dropped that. I guess it's not so big for the Chinese. It does not have as well uh, a notification LED. So we get the always on screen, which is good, but no notification LED, which is just a very minor little thing there, but it is missing. So no splash resistance with the camera there. That's gonna get water in there. So I'm not even gonna test it out, even though we do have that uh, seal around the micro SIM card there. And no micro SD support as well. That could be a problem for some people. They have massive music collections. But overall, it's looking like a very solid phone. Of course, I need to test out the battery life more. The cameras don't look like they're gonna be the best, but they will still take a very decent photo. Video stabilization is all right for optical image stabilization. I would like to see electronic image stabilization as well. And I'd love to see 60 frames per second 4K there as well that manufacturers are going with. So thank you for watching this very long and in-depth unboxing. It's a lot more than just an unboxing. Hands-on with the Vivo Nex S. And I do hope to catch you back with the next video. Bye for now.